Durante la pandemia, las empresas han tenido que reaccionar de forma muy rápida para desarrollar el modelo de teletrabajo desde casa y para implementar una nueva cultura de trabajo entre sus empleados. En esta situación, el haber definido una buena estrategia a nivel tecnológico ha sido la clave para una rápida reacción y para la buena gestión de la pandemia. Repasamos cuáles han sido los elementos clave desde un punto de vista internacional en la estrategia tecnológica desarrollada para la gestión de la pandemia. Nos acompaña el director de la Escuela de Informática de la UNED, Rafael Pastor. Con la ayuda de dos tíos, directores de informática de la empresa Antalis, vamos a conocer cuáles han sido las estrategias de esta empresa en el curso de la pandemia. Hello everybody and welcome to this uh, radio program. We want to speak to you about technology, of course, but this time we want to speak to you about technology from a strategy and international point of view. Today we are going to introduce you a very interesting topic. How a good company, a very good company in this case I, I can refer, a good company strategic about technology was the key for the right management of the COVID pandemic. As I told you before, we want to manage this, this subject from the, an international point of view. Uh, so we're going to have with us uh, two interesting CIO with the high strategic competencies and responsibilities. Both of them are from a very important international company, which is named Antalis. I would like to first, uh, I would like first to introduce uh, Philippe Menilet. Menilet, sorry for the pronunciation, Philippe. <laughs> Philippe <No problem. laughs> has been the global CIO of the Antalis during the last 15 years. He drives the innovation, strategy, and governance for this international company in three continents and more than 25 countries. Hello, Philippe. How are you? Did you, I do a good introduction? Do you think I miss some details you want to add? Well, just rapidly, thank you. Thank you for the uh, introduction, Rafael. And uh, first of all, uh, lo siento, uh, no hablo español muy bien. <laughs> <laughs> Tengo que hablar en inglés. So uh, I will do it in English. So just as an introduction to present a little bit more what is Antalis. So Antalis is a paper, visual com and packaging B2B distribution company. So basically what does it mean? It means that our business is to buy, to store and to sell products on the, around, around paper and, and packaging. And we are operating in 35 countries, mainly in Europe. Uh, but also in LATAM and in Asia. And we have close to 4,000 people in the world. Uh, so, me personally, alors, uh, after years of consulting, mainly on SAP, I've joined Antalis in 2004, uh, and I've been appointed group uh, CIO, uh, Chief Information Officer, in Jan 2007. And after uh, occupying that position uh, during 15 years, I have just recently changed of job, uh, because from the 1st of Jan uh, of this year, I'm now the Group Digital Business Director, Uh, with the objective to both continue to convert our customers to buy through the web platform to the digital channel, uh, but also to attract new prospects and customers uh, in, our, uh, in our web platform. So that's a new challenge around digital after, being, uh, after working on IT. Thanks, Philippe. It's, it's very impressive, your curriculum, uh, and of course, uh, the, 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 work in, the work of the company. So I'm really very, very uh, glad for being, being you with, with us in, in this program. Uh, thanks, Philippe. I will al also like to introduce uh, Miguel Ángel Sánchez. Miguel Ángel is also working for Antalis. He leads the, the technology for several Antalis countries during the last 10 years, uh, having a very strong experience in Portugal, Uh, France and Belgium, Netherlands and Spain. As you can see, a, a lot of five, five <laughs> <laughs> countries is, is a very good uh, experience in this uh, framework of a specific uh, world. Miguel Angel is also driving several forums in different channels to speak about technology and the current digital transformation we are living. Is it right, Miguel Angel? Yes, thank you a lot for, for the invitation. Yeah, you are completely right. My first um, mission is, of course, to go for Antalis. This is what I do every day, to manage the countries where I, I, I work for. But also, you know, uh, Rafael, that um, I do some collaboration in order to speak about technology. This is also my mission, try to explain what is the technology, what is the innovation, what is the strategy, of course. And why not to explain 
what we are living now, which is the digital transformation and the way to go to the industry 4.0. This is what I do, and my mission, of course, is to try to avoid any digital exclusion uh, for consumers and also for, for companies. You are talking about the digital exclusion, Miguel Angel. What, what do you mean, really? What is your concept of the of the digital exclusion? Something similar to the situation in Spain with the bands and the older people. I am referring the, the 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 news now in in the in the yeah. paper. So this is this, this something similar, or indeed, indeed, you are completely right. So we are living now a transformation. And this transformation is going to be really difficult for, for some consumers and also, why not, for some companies. Think about that. We say that it is a revolution because it is covering all the companies in all the sectors. This is the main idea because we say it is a revolution. Like we, we had in the past when we started to work with uh, computer, personal computers and, and technology itself. So what is the risk? The risk is that... Uh, some people is not going to be ready for that. We have the experience in Spain, for instance, with banks and old people. They are not ready to manage the bank account using the smartphone, and this is a really problem for, for them. But we should also think about small companies. Small companies, they don't have the financial support to go to the big uh, companies to explain and to drive the digital transformation. And sometimes they have the money, but they don't understand what is that. So this is my my idea. This is my, my mission as well, to try to help people, to try to help companies to understand the, the, um, the technology and the digital transformation and to avoid any digital exclusion for consumers and for companies. This is a uh, very, 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 really interesting topic, and I'm sure we'll have another session to pick up only uh, about that because I think it's uh, sure. it's a, 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 a very, very uh, modern topic now, uh, and this uh, that we are talking about uh, of, of it. Uh, well, as commented at the beginning, today we want to manage with you, uh, Philip. Uh, Miguel Angel, some key words of key points regarding the management of the pandemic. I think you have a, a, a very strong experience in, in these two years uh, from the beginning of the, of the pandemic. And uh, I'd like to to to, to get the... I ha we had the opportunity that uh, we had today with, with you two. Philip, as a global uh, CEO, uh, Miguel Angel, as a regional CEO, uh, I would like to first, Miguel Angel... Um, if you can summarize in one minute, more or less, that uh, the main CEO responsibilities are, are in the company. What, what are the CEO responsibilities? This is a really good question, Rafael. I think we need to start with, with that. So in, in our responsibility, we have three different scopes. We have innovation, we have a strategy, and we have governance. Regarding the innovation, the CEO should be uh, at least uh, paying a lot of attention about what is happening in the market. We cannot go, of course, deeper in all the technologies, in all the innovation, but at least to know what is happening in the market and what is happening about innovation. This is the first responsibility of the CEO. Then we have the second point, which is the strategy, which is maybe the main responsibility of the CEO. What is the strategy? The strategy is only the way to put the innovation in the company. When you go for the strategy, you have the three years plan, the four years plan, you have also the budget. So it's just the moment when you put in figures, you put in money, you put in budget, all the innovation you were uh, checking in, in the market. And the last point, and also really very important, is the governance. So you have to uh, be completely sure that your company is working very well every day. You have projects, you have support, and you have a lot of uh, tools to help you to do that. So. If you want me to tell you in short, there are three main responsibilities, innovation, strategy, and governance. Thank you. It's very clear. <laughs> Thanks. I, I think it's very important, the key concept of governance. I think it's, for, it's a, a, very, a very wide topic for, for all the, the institutions, I include, for example, in, in our case, our university or, or the our public governments or, and so on. Let's go to start then uh, speaking about the key elements of the management from the of, of the pandemic form. This is the, the the main topic in this in this uh, uh, this, this speak in this, in this program. The from the technology strategy and CEO point of view because it, I think it's the, the most interesting part uh, because um, we we are uh, users of the technology, but mm, what is the higher 
point of view of, of, from, from the strategy, I think is more important. From this view, we are going to speak about, I think, because I would be allowed to, to, to speak about one main concept, which is anticipation. Because Ooh. anticipation, I think, is, is, is very important in these cases to, to, get, uh, to get more uh, successful decisions for, for, the, for the companies and the enterprise. Indeed. Philippe, uh, in order to be ready to face a crisis like what we, we have during this, this, this pandemic uh, during two years and to anticipate our system, uh, I'm going to, to make you a question, a, sim a single question I, I think you can, you can answer in a very, very clear way. What are, from your point of view, the two elements, innovation, technology, that uh, any company has to have implemented before the start of the pandemic or in advance of? And we, we, obviously, we don't know when, when a pandemic is coming out, but uh, what does this is these uh, elements um, uh, we had to implement before the starting of the pandemic to be really ready to react very well with anticipation, which is the main concept in this uh, as well. In this question, sorry. No, it's a good question because on anticipation is key in our in our in hmm. our job and our business, but clearly the. What's happened with the COVID crisis is that it has come, it has come very, very suddenly. And basically, everybody was, in a sense, not prepared to have so, so quickly uh, change in, the, in our daily life. And we, we have it also personally. Huh? Basically, on, on Friday, <laughs> Friday night, we were able to go to a theater. Uh, and then on Monday, we were all locked down at home. So that, yeah, that has been a, yeah. a very, very sudden event. And, and basically, for Antalis, for the for the IT, uh, the COVID crisis has proven that we have made some uh, some choices, and good choice uh, in the past that has allowed to be to be able to react well, and and in a sense to be ready to face uh, the issue and the, and, the, and the problem of the crisis. Alors, basically, it's not so complicated because uh, we are not speaking about very very uh, sophisticated advanced technology. We just have to answer to a simple question is how to be sure that you can work from home with your colleagues, your external partners, suppliers, customers, and to continue basically to do the job you do from, uh, from the office. And in order to be able to do that, you need basically what? You need a laptop. Uh, you need a secure uh, VPN, so a secure connection uh, between the laptop and the resource of the company. You need also to have, in the most of the cases, virtualization of application because it helps also the, the way you can uh, switch from office to home. And of course, you need collaborative tools. You need Teams, you need Zoom, whatever, but you need to have a tool for, uh, for people to be able to continue to collaborate together. And it's true that we have seen in Antalis that in countries where the investment has been done uh, massively on those areas, uh, and those countries, they, are, they were more prepared than the other to, to face the crisis and the pandemic. But after that, it's always easy, uh, for sure, to say that we have anticipated everything afterwards. And, uh, and basically, you can always say, well, wow, we planned it, we were ready, and so on. Uh, but basically, on top of the anticipation of preparation activity, what is really, really also very key and important is the capacity you have to react uh, towards the, the issues and the crisis. So the reactivity of your team, the flexibility of your team is really key uh, because it proves that you are able to rapidly determine and implement the right actions uh, facing the crisis. So that's, that's for me key. So anticipation, of course, as much as possible, but reactivity is also a, a key lever for, a, for, a, for such an event. Now I have two last comments on this. We are not able to digitalize everything. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have some activities, some operations that still require uh, physical work, uh, people working in factories, uh, people working in warehouses. They still continue to operate in the warehouse and the factory. Uh, so you can digitalize back office functions like HR, finance, IT, even sales, but not, not the people working in warehouses and factories. And the second important comment also is that the crisis, in a sense, has reinforced the strategic role of IT within companies because it has proven that IT today is key for companies uh, for being able to be flexible, to be adaptive to a, a situation like that. And uh, it has been a real proof that all the investment that we have done uh, has a real usage. Uh, and basically, people, they were, wow, hopefully, hopefully we have been able to invest on IT tools, because uh, without the investment, we were not able to face uh, the crisis and the pandemic. 
Uh, thank you, Felicia. A very, very, very good question. Well, uh, very good answer. Sorry for the, for the question. Okay, I, I think one of the 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 word you, you mentioned, I think, is another key point for this uh, as well. You you do 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 for us is the the gear uh, the word of reactivity. I think it's, it's a very good yes, uh, yes. concept. But, but we can when we can. I'm not sure if you go deeper on it or or maybe. To explain a, a little yeah. more, because uh, I think it, you have you Philip mentioned uh, about the, the 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 two the two features uh, the the anticipation is very, very important. I think the organization, the institution must be. I don't know if be fully prepared for for this kind of uh, situation. For example, in, in in this case, the pandemic. For example, I mean. Uh, you have uh, several tools pre prepared for for the the remote working or, or so on, but I think the reactivity is a very good to uh, it's a very good uh, a key point for this 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 these cases. Uh, Miguel Angel, do you want to add another any other element or to yes. go deeper in this in this? No, uh, I fully agree with Philip. So I think uh, of course anticipation was completely uh, core. So you cannot deploy in two weeks, in three weeks, what you need in order to implement the home office. It was completely clear. But also, maybe you have the technology, but you don't react. In that case, the final result is not going to be okay. So at the end, anticipation is what you have in your, in your landscape of systems in order to be ready. And the reaction is more, is more how you are organized in order to manage the technology. So you have a good systems in advance and you have a good organization. At the end, you implement anticipation, you implement reaction. And I think at least we can say, uh, Philippe, we can say in Antalis, we did. <laughs> in Antalis, we did. And it was really three, four difficult weeks in March 2020. But I, I think we, we were during the COVID crisis working perfectly and now we are um, almost in two years. Eh? And maybe uh, the only point maybe I'm going to add is uh, or m not to add, to remark. Because when we speak about a strategy and technology, we always think about big topics. Cybersecurity, network, ERP, CRM. And when we go to do the, the three years plan, we put these topics as uh, main points. But during the pandemic, we, we check it, that there is a small point very important, is the user device. The main difficulty for companies during the COVID was to deliver laptops. It was not to, to have a network well prepared. It was not to have a VPN. It was not to have a CRM, ERP, you can work from home, no. The big problem was the laptop. The market was completely out of laptops. Um, and I think this is a really point where anticipation was key. So, for instance, I can, I can say that we were speaking for you and me uh, before the pandemic about that several times and ab about the convenience or not to replace the stock by laptops. Of course, if you have any pandemic, you see that maybe there is no need to do that. But it was a key element which is normally not included in the, in the three years plan in the in the strategy IT roadmap as key, but it was completely a core uh, point in order to react and to be well anticipated for the for the pandemic. Well, uh, I think you, you mentioned about the availability, for example, of the devices or hardware in this case. I think in in this, in this pandemic um, uh, years, uh, we, we suffer uh, all the institution about the, 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 the lack of this device. For example, in the unit, we have the, the same problem. For example, with the, the, the what the st uh, management staff we have in in, in 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 the university, in this case uh, our our staff had to to work from from house, so mm -hmm. they they had to use their own devices, and there is some problem with the the distribution of the the devices in in this case the laptop, the desktop, and so on. So we really now we have the, this this um, impression about we need yes. to have <laughs> an stock a stock a of of of, of, the, of devices, no. I think it's it's a, a, a very good uh, remark, and also and also Rafael, it was the key because of the a lot of risk of security hmm. during the pandemic. Yeah, because a lot of people had to use their domestic computer, 
and you don't have the same level of security in the in the domestic computer than you have in your com company computer mm. and it was because during the pandemic there were a lot of attacks from hackers in order to do what they do no it was also a, a point of the security mm. Thank you, Miguel. Um, just for to finish today, I would like to ask Philippe. Uh, Philippe, are you here? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. What the main difference, uh, if any, between the way to define the strategy about technology between uh, Latin America, Europe, and Asia? I think you have the, this expertise, a very good expertise, and you can ask where. Um, if you think that the difference was in any point key for the management of the pandemic, you know, you have the culture, the legislation, the normative of, the, of these areas, uh, I mean the countries, uh, you, you perceive some difference, uh, some inconvenience and disadvantages about the, the implementation of, of, the, of the strategies for the pandemic? Um, not really. To be honest with you, because uh, honestly, I haven't seen major differences between countries on, on about the way they have managed the, the, the pandemic and the crisis. And basically, whatever uh, the people are in Chile or Malaysia or Germany, basically, we, we had very similar way to, to address the topic. And in the global world in, in which we are, basically, the IT team, the IT community is speaking the same language. And, uh, and it's true that you have a lot of similarities on the way to manage uh, such a topic. Uh, so the difference, as I said earlier, is more basically linked to the investment that has been done or not in the past in some countries. Uh, and it's true, as, as exactly you described and discussed um, with Miguel, uh, people not having equipped uh, in advance people with laptop, they have faced more difficulties than the others. Uh, so basically it's more the lack of anticipation, preparation or investment uh, that are making the difference more than the fact that people are living in Latin America, Latin America or in Asia or in Europe. And uh, for example, Chile was more, probably more prepared than, uh, I don't know, Germany or, or UK in, in some area. So I, I haven't seen any big difference between countries. Uh, and, and basically, what is good in a company like Antalis is we can have a global approach in, the, in, those, uh, in, those, in those areas. And when we are deciding, for example, to invest uh, on some technical, uh, technical, uh, technical device, we are able to apply it for, uh, for all countries with, of course, different timing, different uh, uh, moments to do it. But basically, at the end, not, not so many differences. Just to come back on, on the reactivity you discussed, it's true that we need also to be sure that people are able to think out of the box. And, and whatever the level of preparation you have, whatever the, the mm. level of participation, sometimes you have to take some decisions that were not prepared. Uh, yes. And I think that's also important to keep that imaginity uh, and, uh, and uh, the imagination, sorry, and, uh, and, uh, and the capacity of people to, to take some decisions that were not uh, planned or prepared. And sometimes you have to be courageous. Uh, you have to, to take some decisions that uh, you don't know exactly if it will be uh, uh, good or bad, but voilà, that's, that's also the... The, the impact of such a crisis, you have to take some decision uh, with some risk associated. Com. And I think that's key. And uh, within the IT teams, within the IT community, it's important to still have people being able to think out of, out of the box. I think that's a key area, also a key topic for, uh, for being able to, be, to, to, to have the right reactivity and, uh, and apply the right, the right plan. Thanks, Felicia. A very, a very good uh, thought about uh, the out of box. I think it's, it's a very good um, another, another key to, to think about and mm -hmm. to provide more more comments. Uh, Miguel, yeah, you? yeah, because uh, sometimes you you are not ready for everything. And yeah. then, uh, what is the the key word? Imagination. Mm. So you you need to imagine how to do in three four days one week uh, in a situation you never had in the past. That was the. It's impossible to be ready for everything and to put anticipation for everything, especially when the situation is so exceptional. That's, mm. the, that's the point. So I fully agree with uh, Philippe. We need to follow processes. We need to follow plans. We need to do the preparation, anticipation, reaction. But from time to time, you need to put your imagination to, to play. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I, we have to, we can resume on, on the intervention, on the intervention on the in the in the program. I think we can we can resume in three words: anticipation, 
reaction and imagination, I think, <laughs> are yes, the three key indeed. points. So uh, we, we have to, to, to close the, the program. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for, for, for you being with, with us in, in the UNED. Felix, uh, a lot of thanks for you, uh, you. We know you are a very busy uh, a very important pe pe person, so we, we are very grateful for your presence in, 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 in the program. And I'd like to thank you so much, and of course, uh, Miguel Angel that is here in, with us. And thank you so much for, for you two for being here and for your valuable comments and and apportation for this very great topic about the pandemic and how a very big institution like Antalisa has been uh, managed. Thank you so much, Philip. Thank if you, you want Raphael. to thank you for the invitation, it was a real pleasure and uh, it was uh, well, it's a good opportunity to discuss about uh, that important topic. So thank you again, muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Rafael. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Philippe. Merci. Merci. Despido Merci. en español, yo creo que es interesante. Gracias a todos. Habéis visto que ha sido un programa muy interesante, con, con aportaciones muy relevantes desde el punto de vista, sobre todo, de, de la gestión, que al final siempre desde el punto de vista en informático, en la, en, desde la escuela siempre nos interesa también tener esa visión un poco más de alto nivel, que, 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 que siempre estamos un poco más abajo técnicamente, pero sí es interesante pues, conocer eh, cómo funciona la, eh, la vida real en, en cuanto a estrategia en IT y cómo se ha gestionado la pandemia. Bueno, con esto cerramos y os agradecemos a todos estar ahí y escuchar el programa y por supuesto de nuevo mis agradecimientos a Miguel Ángel y a Filit. Muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias. Es el coloquio que ha mantenido el director de la Escuela de Informática de la UNED, Rafael Pastor Vargas, con dos invitados. Miguel Ángel Sánchez y Filiz Menilet, tíos de la empresa Antalis, con los que hemos conocido de primera mano un buen ejemplo de gestión durante la pandemia a la hora de desarrollar la estrategia tecnológica y definir el modelo de desempeño del teletrabajo desde casa entre sus empleados. Os agradecemos vuestra atención y os invitamos a compartirlo si os ha interesado este podcast desde nuestro canal multimedia canal.unez.es. Gracias por estar ahí. 